Sky, once used to old rules, has filled with defiant silhouettes. Statements from Beijing suddenly flooded the net. The J-20 is not just an aircraft, it is a new reality of air dominance. Parades, demo flights, insider claims about hundreds of units. The world goes quiet for a moment, wondering, is this really the end of the Western fighter era? But behind the shine and headlines hide whispers about weak spots, about engines and tactics that have never faced real combat Beijing's idol cracks, and even more. The praised fighter has a rival, and it's not an ordinary aircraft, but the future of the skies, F-47, NGAD, a networked brain, drone swarms, and technologies never seen in action. Who wins this game of mass production versus revolution? Numbers or ideas? Will the J-20 have enough power to challenge the ambition of the F-47? Or will the new American concept change everything? The F-47 is a maneuverable sixth-generation fighter, a designed platform with a combat radius of about 1,150 miles, a speed of over Mach 2, and an architecture that controls drone swarms and a vast sensor network. In contrast, the J-20 is not just another stealth jet. It's a heavy, long-range player that Beijing pushes into the sky by the hundreds. Its size also impresses, about 69 feet in length, 43 feet wingspan, an empty weight of 37,000 pounds, and a maximum takeoff weight of 82,000 pounds. It also has a large fuel belly, holding 26,000 pounds of fuel, which allows it, with external tanks, to fly 3,420 miles with a tactical radius of 1,240 miles. For the F-47, engineers focus on advanced stealth shaping, adaptive cycle Pratt & Whitney engines, over-the-air software updates, and high modularity. Also, the jet works not just as a unit, but as a combat network hub. The U.S. Air Force is already discussing target batches of over 185 units. So, what exactly makes the J-20 intimidate the enemy? Its powerful WS-15 engine, which gives it a chance at supercruise and improved maneuverability, as well as its internal base for modern BVR missiles, for example, the PL-15. Its avionics are also solid, AESA IRST and electro-optical systems turn the jet into a true network node capable of operating in tandem with loyal wingman UAVS. Meanwhile, the network around a single F-47 is not just a pair of cheap drones, but a multi-layered ecosystem of autonomous platforms, fast, controllable UAVs like the MQ-28 and the latest Andrew Fury prototypes act as scouts, shielding elements, and strike support under the control of the fighter pilot or an automated system. In parallel, small, attributable platforms operate, loitering attacking drones and micro-swarms for saturating air defenses, pinpoint strikes, and rapid reconnaissance, as well as specialized sensor and EW drones with modular nose sections for ISR, electronic attack, and creating decoy targets. To ensure operational endurance, the network may also include autonomous tankers, logistics platforms, and ground air control nodes that maintain the web of communication and data. All of this runs in man-in-the-loop, or autonomous mode, relying on AI and the overall CCA architecture which is why the U.S. invests billions into these systems, allowing one F-47 to control dozens of UAVs at once and multiply the effect of a single sortie. There is no official cost per unit for the F-47, but analysts and estimates usually place it at around $250 to $300 million per aircraft, in USAF budget requests, large sums are outlined. In 2025, about $2.7 billion was requested, and forecasts mention $19.6 billion over a five-year period, underscoring the scale and expense of the program. The approximate price of the J-20 is more modest, 
reaching about $100 million per unit, and according to Beijing statements, the number already in service is in the hundreds. In reality, the duel in the sky is already underway, and it's happening on two levels at once, real and conceptual. On one side is the J-20, a machine Beijing puts into the sky in packs, a large, long-range platform capable of holding patrol over the sea and pressuring the enemy with sheer numbers. On the other side is the F-47, an ideologically new brain platform, designed as a networked commander of drone swarms with deep sensor integration and AI support. So what will win? Quantity or revolution? There are several shocking realities in this confrontation that explain why the stakes are so high. The J-20 has already left the prototype phase and become an operational aircraft. Many machines in service mean a real combat presence. Its path was not smooth. The long engine story and the difficult transition to the domestic WS-15 largely defined the platform's combat readiness. Now, the J-20 is evolving from a fighter into a network node. Avionics upgrades, UAV integration. This gives it the mass in the sky that truly shifts the balance in the theater of operations. But quantity has vulnerabilities. Questionable stealth effectiveness in real combat, concerns about serial engine reliability, and a massive logistical backbone that must be supplied and protected. All of this opens pathways for enemy countermeasures. Numbers are an advantage, but they create attack opportunities. The F-47, in contrast, is built on a different kind of math. Fewer units, but each one is a network center. By design, it's not just an aircraft, but the brain of a strike group. Over-the-air software updates, AI-driven decisions in battle, control of drone swarms. Meanwhile, the NGAD story is not fantasy. X-plane demonstrators have already accumulated hundreds of test hours, the first airframes are being assembled, and the official flight is scheduled for 2028. And adding to the intrigue is this fact. Due to program secrecy, rumors, and unofficial reports keep appearing about hidden tests over ranges like Groom Lake. So it's possible that some demonstrators are already flying off the books. In tactical scenarios, everything seems straightforward. In short, surgical engagements, the advantages on the side of the F-47, its advanced sensor integration, AI support, and ability to control drone swarms simultaneously allow it to detect targets faster, make decisions quicker, and neutralize key threats. An important note, this advantage works only if a full ecosystem is in place. Helper drones, secure communication channels, EW coverage, and reliable logistics. The J-20, on the other hand, is strong in long-term campaigns. Mass production, large fuel reserves, and sheer numbers provide constant air presence, pressure on enemy supply lines, and the ability to exhaust the opponent's resources. However, knowing Beijing's approach to secrecy and selective data disclosure, all publicly stated J-20 specifications may turn out to be incomplete or exaggerated in practice an attractive wrapper hiding real limitations. So today, real air power leans toward the J-20 due to availability and quantity, but the picture can flip if the U.S. manages to deploy the F-47 and its infrastructure at scale. In other words, only practice, real combat, and logistical resilience will show which platform will dictate the rules of air warfare in the long run.